So in a four point, insurance companies want to make sure that your pipes are not galvanized, cast iron, or polyurethane. In the bathrooms, we're looking at the toilets. We're going to wiggle the toilet, make sure it's not loose, and that when I flush, no water is coming off the bottom. In the shower, we're looking to see that none of the tiles are cracked and there's no grout missing. So one of the things in question is, do I see any visible leaks? So I'll take my flashlight and I'll run around, especially where the valley of the hips are, and I'm looking for any signs of leaks or a repair. Another thing I'll do is when I come into a house, I'll take my hand and I'll rub the wall. If powder comes off, it lets me know that the house has not been recently painted and they probably should budget to start painting interior. If it comes out nice, smooth, and shiny, that could be an indication that they've recently painted and this could hide defects. So one of the questions they ask from the four point is what kind of plumbing is inside the house? They don't want to see galvanized, cast iron, or the gray polypure thing. So another thing I have to do in a four point is I have to run all the appliances to make sure that they're working and they're not leaking. Another thing in the four point is they want to make sure that the wash machine and the dryer are working and that are properly installed. And another thing I want to do is on the back here, I'm going to suggest that you have these type of metal braided hoses, not the black ones, because the black ones get a weak spot in them, just like a tire, and they can get a bubble and blow. So this is the better, the braided metal hoses. Okay, on the water heater, we're going to take a picture of the water heater from top to bottom. We're going to look at this down here on the bottom and look sure we have a water pan. The whole idea of this pan is if this pipe here, which probably has a pressure relief valve, goes down to the back and lands in here. So forever it has to flip up and expose water, it will go down there and you'll see it before it becomes a big problem. The other thing we're going to test up here is called the expansion tank. It should have a solid sound here and a tinny sound. Solid, tinny. That's what we want. If it's solid and solid, it means that this is full of water. There's a diaphragm in there, which is kind of like a flexible frisbee. And if it breaks or gets old, it fills up with water, then this would have to be replaced. But this is what we want to hear. Solid, tinny. All right. Now, this is not part of the four point, but definitely home maintenance. If you read your owner's manual, it will tell you at least once a year, you're going to put a garden hose on here. You're going to take a Phillips screwdriver and you're going to slowly turn this on and have the water rush out. And you're going to run it for about 10 15 minutes, shut it off, wait 10 15 minutes for this thing to fill back up, and you're going to dump this again. Now, I recommend before you turn this on, you turn off the heating element, the circuit breaker to the hot water here, because we don't want this running with empty water. Also, in your garden hose, at the other end, take like a knee-high or pantyhose, put it on the end, and wrap some rubber bands around. That way, whatever is coming out, you'll be able to see what's coming up, and it'll be a lot easier to clean. So once a year, you put a garden hose on here, turn off the heating element, which is a circuit breaker. You're going to turn this with a pair of pliers, turn it on, let it run about 10 minutes, wait 10 minutes, let it fill up. Run it. You're going to do it three times, and that could double the life of your water heater. Right now in North Central Florida, an electric hot water heater is expected to live between 10 and 12 years. But I have seen hot water heaters that are 27 years old and are still running because they were uh, properly maintained. On the outside of the heat pump, one thing I'm going to take a picture of is I want to make sure it's level this way and this way. I want to take a picture of the brand and on the back I'm going to take a picture of the of data label which is required. If in the event that the sun is hitting that part of the heat pump, it will fade or decay. The next thing I'm looking at is going to make sure that each corner 
has these metal strap down brackets. And then I'm going to try to wiggle the unit to make sure that it's secure. So this is called the condensate line, which is basically a fancy word for exit of the water coming out of your air handler because especially in the summertime it sweats. You want to be able to pull it off up and see this slime. This is an indication that it's not being maintained properly. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go get a gallon of hot water, put it in a jug that I carry with me. I'm going to put some dish soap and I'm going to pour it down the drain on the inside, which will show you the next step. I'm going to put a bucket here to catch to see what comes out. So this is the condensate line which is the beginning of the pipe which we stall the exit by the heat pump. This is something you should do every three months. No bleach, no vinegar, just going to take a gallon of nice hot soapy water. You're going to add soap. Don't add the soap first or you're going to get a bottle full of bubbles. You're going to put it down. Now I put a bucket underneath the other line so we can see what comes out of here because we noticed on the outside there was always some sludge building up inside of that tube. You want to go slowly because if there is a clog it's going to make a mess here. Sometimes it's a wasp nest, sometimes it's a dead snake that went after a gecko, sometimes it could be geckos and one time it was a dog had chewed the end of the pipe closed, probably chasing a gecko. And so the water was not coming out, so it splashed. Another thing, so we look down here, one point that this is called a safety valve. If this ever does get clogged, this is going to fill up with water. This is going to float up, and your heating system and cooling system will not work. Another thing when you do that, you should take this once in a while and turn it upside down and see if your heating system will come on. If it does, it means this is, does not work. In about one in 50 houses I do this, the heating system comes on. So, while this is going down here, you turn this off because we don't want it running while we're doing this. So, now, if ever you come home and your heating cooling system is not working, the first thing I recommend is come down here and you're going to look in here and feel if there's any water. If there's water, then you've got a problem. Don't call anybody. Borrow somebody's wet dry vac and you're going to vacuum the water out of here. Don't, don't blow it. Vacuum the water out of here. Go outside and vacuum the water out of the thing and then try and filling in the hot water. Let it sit 10 minutes. If you can't clog it, then you might have to get a, uh, a snake to put in there. So now we're going to go outside. So now we've caught what's in here. This is very good. It's the soap. So even though there was sludge here, and I can get this in. See, I'm getting the sludge out of here. There's sludge in here, but it's not coming out in here. So this is good. If this was to come out, if this had a lot of stuff in it, sometimes it has like little black dots, which is gecko poop. It'll have more sludge. Then you want to wait 10 minutes and repeat the hot water. Don't add any more soap. Just going to fill the bucket up again, the jug with hot water, fill it again until this comes out clear. Right? When you dump the water, don't dump it near your plants. Put it somewhere. You don't worry about the uh, soapy water killing. So your patio, just someplace you want. Don't mind killing it. So here, but don't pour the soapy water up near your plants. All right, so we're going to check the, hot, the air filter. We've got to see if it's dirty, see if it's properly installed. Now this says airflow is going that way. If you're not sure where your airflow is going, what you do is you either get a feather duster, go get Kleenex, turn the system on. If your hand is wet, you can put your hand in there or Kleenex. In whichever direction your Kleenex goes in, you know your airflow. All right, so whatever the airflow, if it's going this, then on this arrow here, you put it up. 
if this air filter starts to look gray, almost like this, you've gone too far. So this should look as white as possible. And there are companies that sell washable, reusable filters. And I like them because people are more likely to use them than cost them 40 to 80 dollars to replace a four inch filter. Right. Basically a four point is a mini home inspection. It's about the heating and cooling system. It's about your water heater. Does it get hot? Do your pipes have galvanized um, cast iron or the gray polyurethane pipes which are all a no-no. The other thing is electrical system. We're going to take the cover off. I'm making sure you've got the same right wires for the gauge, no double taps, and then the roof. We need to go up on the roof, make sure that you don't have any cracking or high granulos, um, lifting shingles, your ridge vents coming apart, solar tubes are not need, are needing sealing, and um, you don't have any scroll damage to your lead pipes. For more information, please call Sunburn Home Inspection, 352-272-8150. I've been in business for almost 20 years. I belong to three different building associations, and I'm a woman. I'm more detailed.